down and out, but when you have a Heisman candidate at quarterback, you're never done. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horwitz, glad to be with you on the Toyota College Football Preview, breaking down 5-3 and three, Florida State and undefeated number 2 Boston College. The Eagles saved their season with a last-minute win at Virginia Tech, but now they have to avenge their last home loss. They have 16 straight wins at Alumni Stadium, dating back to a defeat at the hands of an underachieving Florida State team sounds familiar. For more on this game, we bring in Spencer Tillman from Houston as we do every weekend. Spence, big picture here. BC has four games left. The teams they play have a combined 20 and 12 record. Maryland, the only one of those four that has a 500 record. Everybody else has a winning one. With the resolve they showed you last week, do you see the Eagles running the table? They could do it, but the Clemson game is going to be a hiccup game because I think with their two solid runners, uh, they're going to be able to control the ball a little bit more and not allow that vaunted offense of BC to get on the field and get a rhythm to set them up for the fourth quarter. But if they get past Clemson, I think they're going to close out Miami, and, and I think uh, they'll be undefeated. So congratulations to them in advance, provided they get past Clemson. <laughs> well, Clemson's a tough one to call because you never have any idea what to expect out of Tommy Bond. It's the most Jekyll and Hyde club in the nation is, along with it? Georgia Tech. But uh, with this game here, Matt Ryan obviously threw himself back into the Heisman race with his uh, fourth quarter performance at Virginia Tech he, he, with his two touchdown passes. Again, he goes up a very tough defense. He's got another one this weekend with Florida State, but it's on his home field. Well, what about Matt Ryan have you been most impressed with? Well, I think, first of all, digesting this system of Jeff Jagosinski's, it is a West Coast-style approach, and this is a total shift from what they had been doing last year. So I think that has been impressive. Uh, you look at other teams like Florida State, prime example, and how teams have struggled or players have struggled to adapt to um, Fisher's uh, offensive style. And so Jimbo Fisher is an outstanding coordinator, but his position players, quarterback, has struggled to digest what he's trying to accomplish. So to see Matt Ryan come in and just totally envelop what, uh, what his coach has put on the plate for him has been impressive. Well, it's been a professional style offense, and he's got four different receivers with at least 30 receptions and 300 receiving yards. One of just four football bowl subdivision teams that can say that. On the other side, Florida State, you know, the QB carousel continues. You talk about the problems that they've had at that yeah. position. They've gone from Weatherford to Xavier Lee, and now they have to go back, back to Weatherford because Xavier Lee suspended mm -hmm. uh, Bobby Bowden. He wouldn't say why. So, again, Spence, it, it's Drew Weatherford against this great Boston College defense. Well, at least he doesn't have uh, Xavier Lee looking over his shoulder. I mean, there must be something in the water this week with quarterbacks, Paralu at LSU and all the craziness that's going on. We don't know much about that situation as well. But again, I think that the fact that he doesn't have him looking over his shoulder is probably going to be more settling for him as a quarterback, but I'm not so sure it's going to be enough to get a win. Yeah, I'm not so, so sure either here. Let's get into this Florida State offense because, uh, y y you know, Virginia Tech, the way it moved the football was on the ground. Brandon Orr had a good game, and you've got Anton Smith at Florida State, but this is not a good running football team. How in the world do you expect them to move the football on Boston College's defense? Well, Weatherford has got to have a perfect game. That's the only way they can maintain success because if he has a perfect game passing the football, we just mentioned that their running game is really inept in my opinion. They've got to stretch the field. They've got to spread them out by formation and then hopefully get mismatched in terms of numbers. Get their six to block five on the other side. And if they spread them out, of course, you'll have more men in coverage. So I think that's their best shot at success is flipping the script traditionally from what we've known Florida State to be, and that's run first and then pass to set up everything else. So it's going to be interesting to watch, but I don't think they have a shot at winning this contest, uh, but it'll be interesting to see them try. It, it certainly will be. That offensive line has been terrible this season for mm -hmm. Florida State. Uh, Jeff Jagodzinski, you talked about him earlier. He's trying to be the first Boston College coach to start 9-0 since Joe McKinney. I know you like yeah. Boston College to win. How big? 1929, Joe McKinney, long time ago. Uh, I think Boston College will win at least by three touchdowns. They're that quality of a team, Jason. Three touchdowns. All right, Spence, we'll you see bet. if that happens. We'll, we'll see, we will see you on Saturday on the College Football Today. All right, we'll see you then. Folks, according to Coach Jags, anytime you get mentioned in the same breath as the Patriots, Celtics, and Red Sox, all with either championships or title aspirations, it's just fine by him. His Eagles look to go 9-0 and Saturday, Saturday night beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern for more on this game or any other. Be sure to stay with CBSSports.com and watch everything else on the CBS Audience Network. For Spencer Tillman, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care.